Our next guest is the author of the book White Fear and the host of Roland Martin Unfiltered. He's also a former colleague of mine from CNN. Roland Martin joins us now live. Uh, Roland, thank you so much for being with us. Glad to be here. So let's go ahead and start with your take on the president's speech there. We listened to him call white supremacy a poison. He said that white supremacy has no place in this country. So what did you make of the president's comments and uh, did they go far enough? Um, he, he, was, he is correct in terms of uh, white supremacy has no place, but the reality is it has had a place in America uh, since its inception. Uh, one of the things the president didn't do was he didn't call names. Remember, he came into office, he, he thought that Republicans were going to revert back to the old Republican Party prior to Donald Trump. Uh, they have not. The reality is uh, the opposition party, for him, uh, they actually appeal to white supremacy. Those are their base voters. The f facts are facts. When you look at the percentage uh, of Republicans when it comes to uh, opposing critical race theory, it's not, not even been taught in schools, uh, but they, 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 they respond to the racial buttons. They responded to the buttons that Donald Trump uh, pushed coming down that escalator when he first launched. And so uh, he has to be very specific. Senator Chuck Schumer uh, has sent a letter to Fox News telling them uh, enough is enough when it comes to replacement theory, which is nothing more than white supremacy and white nationalism. Uh, and so when you turn on Fox News, you're dealing with, uh, you know, a white power hour back to back to back. That's a reality. And so you got to call it what it is. And so he did he did OK, but he could have gone a lot further. Let's go ahead and circle back right now to what you just said about the great replacement theory or white replacement or white nationalism or white supremacy. The theory, though, this conspiracy theory, Roland, where did it come from and how does it continue to spread? Who is responsible for this? Well, first of all, uh, white folks need to recognize that they engineered the first replacement theory when they killed off Native Americans. So let's just be real clear, okay? So uh, th th this whole idea in terms of um, replacement theory, I mean, goes back a very long time, but you've always had that. Uh, people need to understand American history, which is part of the problem in this country. One of the things that when it comes to um, uh, black success has always been followed by white backlash. This fear that, oh my God, our job is gonna be taken, our white women are gonna be taken, our education is gonna be taken, everything's gonna be taken. And so we have to understand that America has been a white country, okay? Uh, there's a great scene in the movie The Good Shepherd between Joe Pesci uh, and Matt Damon. And Joe Pesci is playing this character, uh, an uh, Italian mobster, and he said, hey, uh, the Italians have this, the Irish have this, the Jews have this. Uh, he didn't say the blacks, he said that, you know, the, the N-word has this. He said, what do you people have? He was talking about white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. And Matt Damon's character says, we are the United States of America. The rest of you are just visiting. That has been the premise. And so what you're dealing with now is this fear. And, oh, my God, we're losing things. We're going to be losing everything. In 2009, a study was done. This is around Obama's inauguration. And the question was asked, are you optimistic about the future of America? Every group, black folks, Latinos, Asian Native Americans, more than the majority said yes. The only group that was less than the majority, white Americans. What does that tell you? That's what we're dealing with, and that's what drove this shooter. That's what is driving other individuals, and we and, and white Americans are going to have to confront their own because this is festering and it's not going away. Trust me. So the shooter, Roland, was, was quote-unquote radicalized online, if you will, using these websites like 4chan, using messaging apps like Discord. Why is this conspiracy theory moving from the fringe now to the mainstream? And are politicians and media outlets responsible for propagating this theory? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you see members of Congress uh, running ads talking about replacement theory, you've got J.D. Vance who's trying to become the next United States senator talking about, oh, my goodness, the Democrats are bringing in these millions of illegal immigrants because those are going to be their voters. I mean, this is what they have been basing this on. And so you have people who have been making this part of the political apparatus. And so Republican leaders have not condemned this. This has been their language. This is what Donald Trump talks about. This is what QAnon talks about. You've got a Republican candidate running for governor uh, in Pennsylvania right now who's a QAnon supporter. He is going to likely be the Republican nominee for governor in the state of Pennsylvania. And so we have to understand that this is... The, this is who a party is that uh, uh, they are appealing to, okay? It, it's a fact. And so they, they're, they're cute with it by saying, oh, no, 
we're discussing immigration. No, we know exactly what you're discussing. And so this is a part of their narrative. You see it being uh, promoted by conservative radio, by bloggers, and conservative online. And so you have the far, and see, people don't need to understand. You've got the far, far, far right, they call it the fringe. Those folks still vote. This is real simple. Which party do they support, Republicans or Democrats? Which party is supporting Confederate monuments? Which party does not want to get rid of uh, a military bases named after Confederate generals? Republican Party. What does that tell you who they're appealing to? Which party will you see Confederate flags waving at events, Republicans or Democrats? In, I rest in, my case. In the meantime, you know, it's cultivating extremism online, right? You have young people that are coming across these websites like 4chan and so on and so forth, and they're quote unquote being radicalized. I want to play you some sound from a woman who says that she is a reformed extremist. She spoke with the Associated Press. Now she's mentoring others, Roland, who are trying to leave these extremist groups. Take a listen right here to what she has to say about it. Nothing is going to get better and is going and is and is going to get increasingly worse in terms of racially and ethnically motivated violence um, in America unless we actually really commit to to making that be something that is no longer part of our our, our legacy. What do you make of what she had to say right there? Well, she, she's correct, but 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 I need I need us to understand something and see and this is the danger. When we talk about being extreme, okay, I, I, I totally understand that. Okay, this is extreme. The problem in America is that we, we go, oh, that's isolated. Because, see, we think of white supremacy at, at, at writ large as crosses burning in, uh, in, in driveways, uh, hoods. The problem is not necessarily those people who are extreme. It's those who call themselves moderates. So what they're doing is they are replicating or they're taking the exact same language. It's just not as extreme. It's just not as uh, hardcore. And so when you take these individuals who support the January 6th uh, white domestic terrorists who were on the Capitol, and then they go, oh, they're patriots. They were just exhibiting the First Amendment. Then you hear, well, no, it wasn't as bad as you described. Who has said that? Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Congressman Jim Jordan. So, so you take the extreme positions, and now you hear it coming out of the mouths of individuals who could be in leadership if Republicans win the House and the Senate. And so that's the danger. We we got to be very careful and not say, oh, this is just this it was a Muslim attack. We'll be having a far different conversation in America right now, and that is something we must understand. The FBI director told us, Veronica numerous times. The greatest threat in America right now is white domestic terrorism. People had better understand how real this is. All right, Roland Martin, always great to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us here on Newsy Live. Always appreciate your insight into these uh, matters.